the next speaker is Bishan Shah, and he's going to talk about Plasma Mobile, the most perfect uh, operating system for mobile phones and the most open one. So give a warm welcome to Bishan. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, so I will talk about Plasma Mobile. Uh, we introduced Plasma Mobile in Academy 2015 at the, the Corona. And uh, since then, we have been slowly, slowly moving towards open mobile platform. Uh, so, and we also finalized the vision uh, in 2016, so that that was about full. That vision will provide a full control over your information and communication, and it's also inclusive to third-party software. And uh, Plasma Mobile also aims to provide seamless cross-device experience. Like uh, uh, if you have your mobile, yeah, your mobile device can be you. You can use similar, same software on the, your mobile device and your, also on your desktop device. So also Plasma Mobile aims to follow the open standards. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, what's going on in Plasma Mobile project in general and uh, where are we toward, towards this vision we, we have. So for the year 2017, we have had uh, several achievements. Uh, for, like, for instance, uh, we got uh, first uh, Android Marshmallow of our Android 6 based by Spot. Um, this um, basically previously all the supported devices were based on Android 5, uh, for example, Nexus 5 and OnePlus One. But uh, in 2017, 17, we ported it to um, Nexus 5X, which is uh, which comes pre-installed with Android Marshmallow. Um, we also released uh, Kirigami 2, which is a set of Qt Quick Controls uh, 2 components, which allows you to create applications for Plasma Mobile and also for the Plasma desktop, which are both convergent and uh, can work on both uh, devices sim similarly. Uh, also, one more important uh, uh, one more important project we started or joined was Project Halium. I will talk about it in next slides. Uh, project Halium brought us uh, some more. Uh, officially and unofficially supported device ports. So, and this also brought us some potential new devices where Plasma Mobile can be easily supported, um, but, some, mm, but we haven't tried actually running a Plasma Mobile on them. So, uh, let me talk about Project Halium. So, um, uh, Few months ago, Canonical stopped developing the Ubuntu Touch. Uh, at that time, uh, community members of UbiPorts decided that uh, they will not, uh, they don't agree with the, uh, uh, they don't agree with the decision made by Canonical, and they will continue the Ubuntu Touch as an OS. And uh, this UbiPorts team decided that they will maintain the Ubuntu Touch. Uh, so, in one of their initial meetings, they, dis, uh, they also thought that uh, uh, it's a good idea that uh, the other communities who are working towards the same goal, which is the reusing the Android binary blobs on your on on the mobile devices, we should collaborate with them. Uh, for ex such communities where uh, Shellfish OS. Selfish OS and more, Plasma Mobile, uh, Nemo Mobile, Luno OS, and as such communities. This idea was presented. Uh, uh, then I discussed this idea with Maria Skripskar, and uh, we decided that we should do something like this together. 
uh, we initially started with, uh, with a Google document and a Telegram group. In a Google doc document, people uh, people documented va various ideas on which factors we should collaborate with and uh, um, and which parts should be unified between th these different projects. Uh, this Google document uh, was of uh, 11 to 12 pages long and uh, we sh kept refining those ideas uh, uh, every day. So, and we also had a telegram group, uh, Halium, where we discussed those ideas. Uh, everyone came and uh, gave their new ideas and uh, there were several projects, m members from several projects coming and uh, giving us feedback on their ideas. Uh, after that we started, we decided that uh, we will do, uh, use uh, Nexus 5 as a reference device and uh, uh, have something working. So Project Halium aim aims to provide a common Android, common Android base which you can use, which, which you, you can use to reuse the Android drivers and Android binary blobs. So we started with uh, Nexus 5 as a reference root file system, uh, reference device, and we, we had a reference root file system which allowed uh, us to run various tests, uh, which can make sure that device functions properly, and uh, we are we can reuse uh, all the Android binary blobs. And after that, I also ported Plasma Mobile to use the same Halium base. We and later on, we also started working on Halium 7.1, uh, which I, which I believe is currently just self OS and Halium community is uh, are the only ones we, which are working on Android 7 based port. So Android 7 based port allows us to uh, allows us to re, uh, allows us to have a pl uh, open mobile open mobile operating systems on the really new devices. But previously, in such projects I had to rely on older devices, but uh, with the Android 7 based port, this is not, this is not Android 7 based port, Android 7 based port where this is not reality anymore. So this is the picture of uh, Plasma Mobile running on on Nexus 5, uh, UB ports touch 16.04 running on the Nexus 5, and Plasma Mobile on Fairphone 2, all using same Halium base. So important bit about this is the device you see over there, Fairphone 2. Uh, no one from KDE community had to actually port to the Fairphone 2, but because Halium base was already working there, we can just re just put our root file system on top of the Halium base and we got it working. It just worked. Uh, so, so this allowed us uh, some new devices, uh, for example, Nexus 5, Nexus 5X, One Plus One, Fairphone 2, and Nexus 7 2013 GSM model day. These are the devices on which Plasma Mobile is actually tested. Uh, there are other some community ports, but uh, those are not functional yet. And this also allows us to uh, some potential new devices. For example, uh, for example, one plus two, three X and five. Um, with, I have put their code names. Uh, also, Nexus six and Nexus six five, six P. Uh, and there are many more other devices, but. Um, uh, on which community is working to port and uh, have Halium running on on those devices. So th there are too many uh, devices. So Halium community is actively working on porting those devices. Uh, so so far I talked about everything good, every good things that have happened about Plasma Mobile. But the question is. Uh, that is not everything that is a good. So there are several points where Plasma Mobile needs uh, 
and needs improvement. The one part is the quality and testing. So so far, it's a, uh, we had a really low. Uh, we we had a two or three devices uh, supported by the Plasma Mobile. So pe people who ha had no no those specific uh, people have without those specific devices were not able to test that those. Uh, uh, and as a result, uh, we had no no such bug reports or no such uh, te testing or quality assurance processes. So, so this is the place where we need a, need a improvement and need a, also we will we'll need a help. Uh, we will also, also currently there are two less applications supported by the Pla Plasma Mobile. In theory, Plasma Mobile is a just a GNU Linux system so you can run any GNU Linux application on your Plasma Mobile but still we are missing the touch optimized applications which can work nicely on the mobile devices. And another pro problem is the manpower. Partly this issue is solved by Project Halium where the, we offloaded the work of porting to devices to Porting devices to Halium project, and so we can foc focus on the actual user interface and improvements on Plasma side. Uh, and there are also other external fa factors affecting the pla Plasma mobile projects. Uh, de Android devices or the devices uh, have really old version of kernel, so. And the really old version of kernel is a security nightmare because uh, no one makes sure that uh, the makes sure that uh, those devices have a security fixes ba backported. Uh, and also the devices are getting harder to hard hard and hard to tinker. The, some devices have a totally locked boot bootloader which you cannot really unlock and. So you are stuck with whatever is provided by the vendor. Uh, also, Android have started uh, doing forced encryption on system and data partition, which you cannot work work around easily. So uh, these are the issues. And also, for example, uh, these devices, even if we, they have open source kernel, they require a closed source support support what support files through function to for full extent. Uh, all, uh, and those uh, closed source, uh, closed source by what support by project is uh, basically, you t it's a basically walled garden. You don't re really know what's happening inside. And, uh, for example, modern firmware is a open is the operating system in itself. You don't really know what it's doing when you actually call. Is it recording your data? Is it recording your metadata? You don't really know. And there is a, no way to reverse engineer those easily. So uh, is everything about uh, external factors wrong? Uh, I'd say no. There are some good uh, uh, external factors affecting the plasma mobile project. For example, uh, there is a new project called Post Market OS. Uh, Post Market OS is uh, Post Market OS have a goal which is aiming for 10 year life cycle for smartphone. Uh, Post Market OS project was started by Oliver Smith. Uh, it aims for 10 year life cycle of the phones. Uh, it uses Alpine Linux as a minimal base because uh, Alpine Linux is a famous to be used on embedded devices because it's a really small. You can have a base installation as small as six to seven MBs. Uh, so it's uh, using Weston as a reference user interface, and it wants to use a Plasma Mobile as a as that user interface. Um, just before yesterday, um, Bart Rivers, um, with a nick known as Pure Tryout, packaged the Plasma Mobile on the Post Market OS, which is a really great work. He sh basically started when we started, uh, when I started my academic travel, and uh, he have finished to build all the KDE frameworks, 
plasma and plasma mobile components in just a few days, which is really great. But uh, it is, uh, they haven't actually tried to, uh, to run it, but still, its packaging is a re really huge work. Uh, also, there are uh, projects to have uh, open devices, for example, open devices programmed by Sony, where they aim to have a, a closed source board support, board support parts uh, main into mainline kernel. Uh, Sony is also <laughs> Sony is also working on effort to support devices with uh, mainline kernel. Uh, for also, Qualcomm is working on having a mainline kernel working on their devices. There are few devices which already supports the ma mainline kernel, and uh, also Fairphone is one of the open devices which is um, which. Uh, which is open as open as it can be in both hardware and software terms. And there are also rumors that Purism is uh, launching a Linux phone which will be open in depth. Open. We don't really know. It's just a rumor at this point. So uh, this ends up as a conclusion. So um, journey towards open mobile platform is, is actually hard. Yeah. But we are not the only same, uh, only ones on the same path. Uh, there is a community like QB Ports, uh, Shellfish OS, Mar, Nemo Mobile, and we should, work, we as a community should work together to have an open mobile platform. And yes, that that's the conclusion of my talk. If you have any questions, let me know. So, uh, members of which other projects are currently in Helium? Uh, currently, UB ports, um, Nemo Mobile, Plasma Mobile, uh, Asteroid OS, and uh, there is also pro independent project called GNU Linux support. Uh, those developers are part of the Helium project. Uh, and uh, also, People from Shellfish OS community are present there. Is it possible to install Plasma Mobile on uh, Yola phone? Uh, depends. Um, Yola phone doesn't actually have Android. Uh, I'm not really sure that Yola phone have a uh, Android parts open source. It's a problem with. Uh, it's a similar problem as a. Uh, uh, official Ubuntu Touch devices where they don't have actually the Android parts open source. They have just have a kernel open source. So it's if someone manages to port like let's say Lineage OS or Cyanogen mode to those devices, it should be possible in theory, but we don't really know. Any other questions? Yes, um, I was wondering uh, what is currently working on the reference device, uh, for example, a uh, Nexus 5X. Uh, does the phone stack work? Uh, messages, uh, ca um, the camera. Uh, currently, we have uh, basic functions working. For example, uh, it's not Nexus 5X. Uh, let's try it, um, because Nexus 5X port is uh, really just a week or two weeks old because we migrated to Android 7 based port. So for Nexus 5, we currently have uh, audio calls and um, Wi-Fi and basic functions working, but it's not as polished as uh, users might expect. Any other questions? So, uh, about the manpower bit you mentioned before, uh, it's clear or seems to be clear that like 
the manpower we have is very busy at the moment, so we should try to get new manpower. Uh, right. How do we do? How do you think we can get? I mean, mobile phones is things like people are excited about mobile phones, so right. it, it seems it shouldn't be that hard getting new people, but it seems it is. So, do we have a plan to try to bring new people in? Um, so, I can tell you how to get involved into Plasma Mobile. So, for Plasma Mobile, uh, porting work is now offloaded to Helium projects. So, if you want to port it to your devices, then it's the project Helium to where you should go. go. Uh, if you want to help in packaging Plasma Mobile, then um, we have kept the packaging out of the KDE, out of the KDE uh, Git repository for obvious reasons because we don't want to uh, limit our limit the distributions that can package Plasma Mobile. So if you want to package a Plasma Mobile, there is a Plasma phone packaging GitHub repository. Uh, if you want to work on actual shell, then there is a Plasma phone components uh, repository on KDE Git where you can improve and work on shell. Uh, that shell package is also functional on the, let's say, desktop. So you can run it in embedded mode on the desktop and have, have to easily de do development easily. If you want to work on HW Composer backend and have the device, have the hardware parts working, then you can uh, graphics and hardware parts, if you want to get them working, then the Twin Valent and Twin Valent and other Plasma rep based repositories are also part. So basically, if you want to contribute, to, um, if you want con are contributing to Plasma, then you are also contributing to Plasma Mobile. If uh, you have uh, applications that application that is working on Plasma desktop, and you if you want to run it on Plasma Mobile, then it's also easier with. Uh, then you can also try it on your device or maybe uh, on your desktop with a with a def different form factor switch. Uh, it will also help if we can get uh, some base applications working. So basically, if you if you think you can help with anything of our tasks, then uh, I have a fabricator board where I document this task and. Uh, and the and the plasma and you can ask us in plasma table or plasma IRC channel. Uh, one of the things that you could do is if you're um, developing a new application or uh, rewriting the UI of an application, uh, take into account to have it work on on mobile. Uh, one of the things that is really easy um, is to use the Kirigami framework, which already gives you most of the tools by default. Um, it makes it completely effortless to get at least the, the navigational bits um, working on uh, different screen sizes and different input methods. And if you use that as a base, um, it is actually pretty easy to have applications uh, not just work on the desktop use cases, if that's your primary goal, but uh, to kind of port or have them work on, uh, on Plasma Mobile as well. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Wait. You'll have to clap again. OK, well, this is not technically a question, but, um, but, it, 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 but I am, but well, I, it is a comment based on my experience it's on various Android phones. Well, the devices, uh, where, uh, the devices where you have presented on the, the supported ones are mo mostly based on the Qualcomm based set, 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 uh, chips, uh, which has quite a sim quite quite a similar structure like gra uh, graphics and uh, communication modem yeah. and CPU cores and so on. But if you want to if you want to reach the more more and more Android devices like the devices using Samsung chips or MediaTek or Huawei and so on. Then you might then you might find find that there are mysterious hardware bugs or mysterious GPU bugs, which might not be which might not be abstracted by the Helium project and which 
which might need the need to be dealt, dealt by the plasma mobile itself from what, from what I, uh, what I am understanding. Currently, as far as I know, the KWIN has, uh, has various workarounds for the, uh, for various GPUs like NVIDIA or A, or AMD and so on. And if you are, are trying, trying to expanding the, uh, the support on various non-Qualcomm devices, then you might need to think about, about workarounds for, for CPUs or Android devices and so on. Yes, so uh, one of the things we stumbled upon was uh, yesterday someone managed to get uh, basic graphics working on first Samsung devices on the in the Halim project channel. Uh, also, Qualcomm devices don't really make it easy uh, if you go for non-Nexus devices. Basically, uh, there is a, I can show you code actually, uh, just a wait. So here is a crazy code. Uh, for example, some Qualcomm devices, uh, despite uh, Lib Hardware being uh, open API, which uh, which you should not break, some Qualcomm de uh, devices decides that uh, they should add this uh, new uh, value and modify the existing structure of the code. So those devices break the ABI of the ABI of the everything, for example, Queen Valent or Lib Hybris. So you have to have different root file system for those devices. Uh, so this is this is the one of the packaging problems wh which I, I am currently stumbling upon to solve. So basically every device wants to be special. So this is also yes, this is also one of the major issue in the of porting to those mobile devices. For Plasma Mobile, have you already thought about other form factors like running it on 10 inch big tablets? Um, is it packaged for x86 compatible uh, desktops? We don't have currently actually. Uh, yes, we do have some uh, ISO files for running it on. Basically, you can just uh, use it, it as a live CD on your desktop as well. So yes, we do have uh, AMD 64 packages, but we also need 32 bit packages because some devices have just 32 bit supported support for on these devices. So yeah. So to recap Sebastian's comment, if you use Kirigami framework, it will work on mobile phones, tablets, and desktop, because you don't have a mic. <laughs> Any more questions? If not, let's give a hand to Bushan. So we have a plasma buff uh, on 24 July at 11.30 a.m. And it's in room 2.3. So if you have any ideas or wants to discuss about plasma mobile, then feel free to come. <laughs>